Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless in the last days the book of daniel prophesied that knowledge would increase daniel 12 4 but you daniel shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase knowledge had to increase for future prophecy to be fulfilled the biblical knowledge we have today is because of the increase in technology this is a pretty good indicator that Christ will return very soon. There are many prophecies in Daniel's time that could not come to fulfillment because the technology had not yet been invented. That is why Daniel was told to shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. One of those prophecies is found in Matthew 24 verses 21 and 22. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Flesh is the Greek word sarx, which means flesh, body, human nature, especially a human being. Matthew 24, 22 can be translated like this. And unless those days were shortened, no human nature would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. If Jesus did not return and shorten the days, there would be no human nature saved. Either mankind will merge with artificial intelligence, or artificial intelligence will completely destroy mankind as the dominant species. On the threshold of a new era, advancements in artificial intelligence and robotic technology are escalating at a frenzied pace. Here's former Google executive Mo Gaudet commenting to Sky News about advancements in ChatGPT. AI today is estimated, so ChatGPT4 is estimated to be at an IQ of 155. In two to three years time, we will have two more doublings. You're talking about intelligence of the magnitude of say 3,000 times humans, 5,000 times humans. The IQ of one of the smartest humans ever, theoretical physicist Albert Einstein, was between 160 and 180. So AI and robots will soon become more intelligent than the smartest humans. And Sky News recently introduced its audience to Desktop Amica. I think a world where humans and robots coexist would be an amazing place. We could learn from each other, work together to solve problems, and create a better future for everyone. Our next guest contends the better future that wealthy power elite globalists have in mind for humans goes beyond simply coexisting. Joe Allen believes our brains will be hardwired to artificial intelligence systems. So the future you describe in your book seems dark, terrifying. You write about the emergence of scientism, a techno-religion. So what is scientism? What do you see happening? Scientism, very basically, is the belief that scientific inquiry and discovery will answer all of the existential questions in human life. All those questions which religion seeks to satisfy, scientism uh, holds up material discovery as the, uh, the means of salvation, the means of transcendence. Transhumanism is an outgrowth of that. Transhumanism is the idea that technology will be the, the instrument of that salvation, the instrument of that transcendence. So this is not uncommon knowledge, I think, in our era. It's, in fact, very obvious, especially in the wake of the pandemic. Well, you mentioned that Gnostics believed in Sophia, a feminine figure that had godlike features, the female twin of Jesus, they believed. So is it by accident that one of the best-known robots of our time is named Sophia? Tell us more about that significance. So the robot Sophia addressed the UN yet again for their uh, sustainable development goals meeting. Uh, Sophia takes her name directly from the uh, Gnostic Aeon uh, Sophia. The robot was created by Hanson Robotics. Uh, David Hanson, founder of Hanson Robotics, named Sophia after the character Sophia in Philip K. Dick's novel, Valis. The novel Valis has a Gnostic premise. 
The character Sophia is meant to uh, symbolize the Sophia of Gnosticism. And if you look at the statements from David Hansen, if you look at David Hansen's PhD dissertation, uh, and of course other figures in and around Hansen Robotics, it's without it that there's there's no denying it. Uh, they are seeking to create a sort of technological inversion of what the ancient Gnostics put forward. Well, Elon Musk has talked about implanting an AI microchip into our brain. Do you really see that happening? What would that mean for humanity? Uh, would it make us smarter, destroy us both? So Elon Musk, who uh, September 18th uh, discussed this with Benjamin Netanyahu and also a num uh, two other prestigious AI thinkers, uh, he foresees a potential future in which he said hundreds of millions or billions of people would be implanted with these in order to guide AI according to human will. And um, this is not something that will happen. Neuralink, his company, Musk's company, just got FDA approval. But uh, there are two other companies, BlackRock Neurotech, funded by Peter Thiel, and Synchron, uh, which is funded by both Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates. Both of these companies already have brain-computer interfaces implanted in human brains that allow them to interact with digital vice devices by way of artificial intelligence. This is already a reality. Well, what about the human soul here, Joe? Uh, while they may be smarter than most humans at this point, AI and robots lack a soul. And it sounds like uh, these creators are trying to play God or replace God. So what difference does all this make? In their conception, and this is a generalization, but it's one that holds true for the vast majority of the people, uh, transhumanists, futurists, accelerationists, long-termists, they you pretty much universally see the human brain as the soul. The patterns of the human brain are what Christians would call the soul. They are almost entirely atheist. They see the, these systems as being the creation of godlike artificial intelligence, artificial general intelligence. In fact, Mo Gaudat himself uh, describes it explicitly in these terms. He believes that the programmers at Google are creating a god that never existed in his mind. They are playing yeah. with fire. Yeah, it's, it's big time. Yeah, trying to play God. So what do we do about it? You know, at this point, uh, given that we're talking about the wealthiest man on earth, uh, the most powerful corporations on earth, the most powerful military on earth, and all of their competitors in China, India, and Israel, and Europe, uh, I think probably this is not the most optimistic. Um, the Brace yourself. Not much we can do. I mean, uh, I, I think on an individual level, there's plenty. And on a communal level, there's plenty. But I think there's going to be a lot of sacrifices for anybody who doesn't want to play along with this whole thing. Once again, Bible prophecy is exactly in line with world events. As science races to alter mankind, the potential to change the human race forever seems just a few years away. Do not be deceived. The sin of humanity has cursed this world with sickness and death. No technology can ever change that. Transhumanism cannot save you. Only faith in Jesus Christ can. Satan wants to seduce humanity into thinking they can become perfected, godlike beings who can live forever all based on their own ingenuity and strength. Also, the devil can corrupt the image of man further and bring them into rebellion against God and ensure damnation for as many people as possible. This corrupted world is going to end and everything with it. But believers in Jesus Christ will not only live to see a new earth, they will receive a new, perfect, incorruptible body. We do not have to seek human perfection because Jesus has already lived the perfect life for us. It just takes faith in Him as the Savior who died for your sins to receive eternal life, forgiveness in one day, and eternal body as well. 1 Corinthians 15:51 through 55 Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, 
and shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? Verse 51 tells us we shall not all sleep, meaning we shall not all die. There is going to be a whole generation of believers who are going to do an end run on the grave. We will be caught up in the twinkling of an eye. We will receive immediately an immortal, imperishable, incorruptible body. We will be caught up to be with the Lord. At the same time, those who have died, who are dead in the Lord, their bodies will be raised, and the Lord will bring their perfected spirits with them, and they will be reunited, and their bodies will be changed. 1 Thessalonians 4, 15-18 For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. When the rapture occurs, the world will capture the moment. Cell phones, security cameras, law enforcement body cams, doorbell cams, and more will all bear video record of the great disappearance. The world will reel with concern from watching the strange, mind-boggling and unbelievable video footage that goes viral across the globe. People vanish before their eyes and all caught on camera. This event won't be science fiction, conspiracy theory, or mindless speculation. When Christ comes for his people, it will be in the twinkling of an eye. Between the resurrected dead and the raptured, billions of people will exit this planet in an instant. But billions will be left behind. It will be chaos on our globe, but incredible glorious joy in the skies. This is the rapture, the great disappearance. It is vital to know what the Bible says about this coming day. The next event on God's prophetic agenda for the earth. Are you ready? The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A, admit that you're a sinner. B, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised them from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. Occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready!
Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.